spring is quickly approaching, which means it's time for us to start our spring gardens. Now, this is my second spring planting. So over the past year or so, I've learned quite a bit from gardening and I want to be able to share some of those tips with anyone who is looking to start in a garden for, for the first time. Now, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can grow something pretty much anywhere, but there are a few things to keep in mind so that you can be the most successful. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Ariel. Thanks for splashing by. <laughs> I make gardening content such as this, and I also make videos about sustainability and intentional living. So if that floats your boat, then go ahead and subscribe. You can also expect the occasional mermaid pun here and there. Today I'm here in my local community garden. This is where I do the majority of my edible gardening. I have two four by eight raised beds here and this garden has a bunch of raised beds for lease, but they also have a portion of the garden that's dedicated to donations. So they send it to nonprofits and other local charities in the area. And I volunteer with that part of the garden so I get free veggies sometimes, but I also get tons of gardening advice. So I want to share the advice that I've learned over the past year with you guys. Now keep in mind that this is just an intro to gardening video. There are so many um, nuances, I guess, that we could go more in depth in, but I'm just going to give you the basics so that you can feel confident starting. Now let's get to it. Before you go out and start buying your seeds and starter plants, you first need to consider where you're going to be growing. Like I said earlier, you can grow something pretty much anywhere, but there are different factors depending on what you want to grow. For example, lighting. How much sunlight your plants are going to get is super important for your garden. Most edible plants need at least four hours of direct sunlight a day in order to thrive, but other plants can use up to like eight hours or more of sunlight a day. Take a look at where you're going to be growing and see what type of light it gets throughout the day and make a note of that so that you can find out what types of plants do best in the amount of sunlight that you're getting. Before I found this community garden, I planted some spinach on my balcony, which was only getting about four hours of sunlight a day. And that was enough to be able to have enough spinach and kale for my smoothies. So even if you have like a small area or you feel like maybe you don't get enough light, just measure how much light you're getting and um, you know you can figure out what you can grow from there. You would be surprised with how many things you can grow even if you don't have a lot of space or a lot of sunlight. While we're talking about lighting, another important factor when deciding what you're gonna grow is knowing your hardiness zone. The USDA hardiness zone is a map of eight to 10 different zones that we have in the US and I think it goes into Canada too but it tells you the average temperatures in each of these zones. So then once you know what hardiness zone you are in, I'm in Georgia, so I'm in zone eight, then you will be able to figure out what types of plants can be grown in your zone. And also you can figure out when are the best times to plant those plants. I'm putting a link down in the description box to the hardiness zone map so that you can find out what your hardiness zone is. The next thing to consider is where you'll be growing. Now, maybe you have a backyard where you can plant directly in the ground, or maybe you want to build raised beds, or maybe you want something a little bit less permanent and you want to do a container gardening. What you grow in will have an impact on what you can grow. However, many things can be planted in containers. For example, last year I planted tomatoes in 15 pound grow bags in my in-laws backyard. Those are super versatile. So I would highly recommend container gardening if you're new to gardening because it's a little less pressure. It's easy to get started and 
you know, you can grow a lot of things in containers. Or if you don't have any space, of course, I'm gonna recommend looking for a community garden in your area. Uh, most community gardens do have weekly work days, typically like on the weekend, where you can volunteer and talk to some of the people who are working in the garden. And um, it's a great way to learn. Once you've determined how much light you have, what your hardiness zone is, and what you'll be growing in, it's now time for the fun part to decide what you want to grow. Now, if you're first starting out, you probably want to start with some easier plants. So some easy plants to start out with are going to be leafy greens, such as spinach, collards, kale, lettuce, things like that. Some other vegetables that I've had good luck with are squash, beans, and peppers. So you can look on your hardiness zone map to see how those grow in your, in your area and also when to grow them. But I think that those are great to start with. Sorry it's so loud, there's construction going on over there. Tomatoes are also fairly easy to start, but they can have some problems like with pests and disease. So the maintenance may be a little bit more difficult. So I wouldn't try starting too many of those, but if you wanna learn, then go ahead and try it. Everyone's experience is different. I think the most important thing when you're first starting out is just to keep it simple. I wouldn't go with more than three or four different types of plants because it can be overwhelming trying to figure out what works best for each plant and staying on top of all of that. So try to start small. Now that we've determined what we're gonna grow, now it's time to go ahead and buy everything we need to get started. So as far as seeds or transplants go, I recommend for a new person just starting out to buy starter plants from your local nursery. By using starter plants or transplants, this is going to ensure that you are A, buying plants that are going to grow well in your area. Two, it ensures that you're buying plants that are going to grow in the right season. And three, it just gives you a head start. You have less of a learning curve and you're more likely to succeed when you use transplants when you're first starting. However, if you are starting from seed, you can get seeds from your local nursery, the big box stores, you can get them from Dollar Tree, like grocery stores, um, or you can buy them online. If you're buying online, I like to buy from Urban Farmer. I could do a whole video on starting seeds, um, but for this video, I'm just gonna assume that you take my advice and you're going to start with the transplants just because it's so much easier. But let me know down in the comments if you want me to make a video about starting seeds. Next, of course, we need to buy soil for our garden. Now, when you're at the nursery, there are tons of soil to choose from, but a general rule of thumb is buy the type of soil for what you're planting. For example, there are generally like a flower soil and vegetable soil, or there's soil for in-ground plants or soil for container plants. Basics, you just wanna buy the soil like for what you're growing. And of course, if possible, buy organic. But I think, again, we could do a whole video on types of soil or fertilizers. So leave me a comment down below if you want to see a video on that. Also, if it's your first time starting a garden, you probably need to get some tools. I would say, if, especially if you're container gardening, some of the tools that you need getting started would be gloves, of course, um, a little hand trowel, which is just like a little hand shovel and of course some pruners so that when it's time to harvest you will be able to do so effectively there's lots of different tools out there for gardening but you know like once you kind of get established and find a need for other tools that's when you can go out and buy what you need because you'll have a better idea but before then especially if you're just gardening on a small scale in your backyard or something and especially if you're doing container gardening it doesn't have to be too complicated with the tools. 
Now we have pretty much everything we need to get started. So now we gotta put it in the ground. Now, how you plant things will vary widely from plant to plant. However, a general rule of thumb, if you're planting transplants, once you take them out of the container that they were in, you wanna break up the soil a little bit um, to kind of get the roots out and breathing so that they can kind of latch on to the new soil that you're planting them in. And again, it's gonna vary from how deep you're planting or from how close you're planting them from you know variety to variety. So just read the instructions on the little plant card that you got with your transplants or if you're doing seeds, of course, just follow the instructions on the seed package. And also you want to water thoroughly after you have planted anything unless you're gonna have like rain later in the day, but generally you just want to go ahead and water your plants. Like I said, everything kind of varies widely from what you're planting, but if you want a video more about planting seeds or um, planting transplants, then leave me a comment down below. Wow, you guys, you have planted your first garden. Doesn't it look amazing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, are you proud of yourself? You should be, because getting started is the hardest part. But the next hardest part is maintenance. <laughs> now, again, this is gonna vary widely from plant to plant what they need to be able to grow successfully. But generally, here are some things to keep in mind when you're maintaining your new plants. First, watering. During the heat of the summer, you are going to want to water your plants quite consistently because it's hot, there's not a lot of rain, and your plants can like burn up, get real hot really easily. And not watering is definitely going to stunt the growth and the production of your plants. But you can always stick your fingers down into the soil a few inches, maybe three or four inches, and see if the water and see if the soil is moist. If not, then now's a good time to water. Staying on top of weeds is also a very important factor when having your garden. I generally weed once a week during the summer, um, and that helps me to be able to stay on top of weeding. Aside from weeds taking a bunch of nutrients from the soil that your plants need, weeds can also harbor pests and disease. And if you have too many weeds, it'll be hard to see like your plants, see your soil and see how everything's going. So it's more likely that you could have disease and pests if you have too many weeds. But speaking of pests, there are good bugs that we want in our garden. And of course, the good bugs we're talking about are bees and butterflies. Bees and butterflies are pollinators, which means that they are going to help move around pollen on your plants so that they can grow and produce more. So some ways to get bees and butterflies into your garden are going to be planting flowers. If you can plant native flowers to your area, then that would be great for encouraging pollinators to come into your garden. Or another great way to bring uh, pollinators into your garden are going to be providing a clean water source. Now, a super cute way to provide a clean water source in your garden is going to be this pollinator bucket that was gifted to me from Branching Together. Now, you can just fill this uh, bucket with water and the bees and butterflies can just land on top of it and safely drink water. And that's gonna make sure that they stay in your garden for longer. So check out Branching Together if you need a clean water source for your garden. Another maintenance thing that you can do in your garden is to fertilize. So there are so many different fertilizers that you can use in your garden. There are liquid fertilizers, there are like solid fertilizers, there's compost. Um, so there are so many different ways to fertilize your garden. Now, of course, again, if you want a more in-depth video about fertilization, please leave me a comment down below. 
Well, garden friends, now you've seen how simple it is to start a garden. Yes, there are many things to consider, but to get started, you don't need much. You just have to do it. And take it from me, I am no special person. Like if I can start a garden, you can start a garden. Don't think that you have to have a green thumb. You just have to have some patience and just um, you know, give some time to your garden and most likely it will do well. And if not, just try again. It's all about trial and error. You need to be open to the learning experience and open to like trying new things and open to researching because that's gonna be really helpful once you've gotten started and once your plants are more established and you start coming up against um, more questions about how to keep your garden going and to be the most productive. Now, again, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. As always, continue to make good choices for the health of your body and the health of the planet. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.